Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for this session again. We thank you because of the way you are teaching us and instructing and leading us. We pray, Lord, we'll be teachable. And we pray, Lord, that the instruction of your word will do good in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. That will not become so familiar with this passage, so familiar with the Lord, so familiar with worship, so familiar with the God of heaven, that when he speaks, we don't understand that God Almighty is speaking in a special way. Help us, Lord, to give you the honor, the adoration, the reverence we ought to give you in your presence in Jesus' name. Speak to every heart now. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Matthew chapter 5, and we're reading from verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That word blessed, actually if you look at another translation of the Bible, means happy. And it's very interesting as Jesus started his ministry. And then as he looked at the people and he saw them, he wondered what will be the greatest sin, the highest sin that all these people will be looking for. Verse 1, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. He saw the multitude. What did he see? He saw a desire within them. A longing within them. He was Lord and he is still Lord. And he knows the hearts of all men. You see today, we have to conduct a survey. And we have to find out by questioning. We actually we want to find out something. You send out questionnaires to the society. And then you put these questionnaires in the hands of the people. And they will make random sampling. They cannot interview everybody. They come to this man. They say, would you mind to take a few, a few minutes of your time and give us an answer to these questions? And yes, they say, that's all right. And then they fill it in. They go to this one. They go to this one. They go to this one. And such a survey has been carried out time and again. And the survey is asking, what do you want most? And it doesn't matter. Anywhere you carry out that survey, and you're asking people in Africa, asking people in Asia, asking people in America, asking people anywhere, you say, what is the bottom line? If you could describe just with one word what you want, what will you say it is? When the people don't understand the question, they'll say, I want money. Then they question them more. Why do you want money? So that I can have all my needs made. Then they say, why do you want to have all your needs made? I just want to live a happy life. That's it. Then they ask another person, what do you really want? I want to be healthy. Why do you want to be healthy? I want to have strength energy so i can do my work why do you want to do your work of course so i can earn a living why do you want have to earn a living why can't you depend on other people that will not make me happy what are you saying i want to be happy they go to other people what do you want in life and then they'll say you know the next thing i'm thinking about now i've got everything made what i'm looking for in life now i just want to get married and settle down what do you need a wife for? Why do you want to get married? Then they will say, I just want a partner in my life. All this loneliness and everything, I want to get rid of it. Why don't you want to be lonely? Then they come to the final thing, I just want to be happy. When you conduct a survey and you go all over the world and you are asking people, what's the bottom line? What you need in life? They're going to tell you the bottom line is happiness i want to be happy you want money you want to be happy you want to have your own house not depending upon a landlord you want to be happy 
You want to be able to have a job that satisfies your training. You want to be happy. You want to have a good wife. You want to be happy. You are married. You want to have children. You want to be happy. Jesus saw the multitude just looking at them like this. He didn't need to conduct a survey. He knew the minds of men. He knew that the number one thing they were looking for is happiness. That's why in the original, actually what he said is happy. And the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy at day that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Happy at day at the meat, for they shall inherit their happy at they that do hunger after righteousness and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If there's anything we're asking for. If there's anything we really want, you know, unhappiness, sadness, as a way of making us feel dejected. Ask anyone that ever in any family that somebody committed suicide. They wrote a note behind. Nobody loves me. Nobody appreciates me. Nobody accepts me. Bottom line, I am not happy. If I am not happy here, where am I living? Better cut it off and die. That's why they commit suicide. Nobody ever committed suicide because he was happy. They committed suicide because there was no happiness. Go to the psychiatric hospital. Nobody ever gets to the psychiatric hospital because he was so happy. Then he became a kind of a mental case. Nobody ever had depression because he was unhappy. They had depression because happiness is missing. They commit suicide because happiness is missing. And when Jesus saw the multitude, he knew what was missing in their lives. Family problem there, financial problem there, job employment problem there, economic problem there, national problem there, political problem there. The high and the low. He, need, he knew they needed something. They needed happiness. So he said, watch your lack. And what you are searching for, and what you are looking for in another way i come to give unto you happy blessed fortunate favored are you now you want to put an end to all sadness in your life here is the answer i come with good news the gospel from heaven happy are you if you hunger and thirst after righteousness because you will be filled I'm speaking to you at this time on passion for righteousness. In uh, Psalm 17, Psalm 17, verse 15. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. You understand what he's saying? This man is saying, we were created in the likeness of God. And that is the nature of holiness and righteousness. Any departure from the original creation will make us incomplete, unfulfilled, unhappy, unblessed. Think about it. The fish is created to live in the water. Bring that fish out of the river. Put it anywhere. There's not going to be happiness and convenience. The rabbit. The reptiles are created to move on the dry ground. Remove them from the uh, dry ground and then put them in the river. They are not going to survive. And we were created to be like God. Let us make man in our image, in, in our likeness, in righteousness and holiness. Take that man out of the original habitat, out of the original nature and get him out of righteousness out of the likeness unto god it's not going to be happy that's why jesus said i know you are not happy there's no way you can be happy because you are being uprooted you have been taken away from the original habitat from the way that the lord created you now for you to be happy your thirst your hunger after that likeness of god and then the blessedness and the favor and the grace and the happiness will come to your life in verse 15 psalm 17 as for me i will behold thy face in righteousness 
I shall awake. I shall be satisfied. I shall be fulfilled. I shall be blessed. I shall be saturated. I will come to the limit of all I'm asking for. I'll be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. That's why we're considering the message. This is the only thing that will give us happiness and joy. You will have it in Jesus' name. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, passion for true righteousness. The passion for true righteousness. Number two, praying for true righteousness. Number three, possessors of true righteousness. Passion. Desire. Longing for righteousness. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Hey, can you wait for a moment? And now you need to do some reasoning. We'll reason together. Now, why do we work? Think about it. Why do we go to a place of work and labor and labor and labor? And why do we expect and desire a salary at the end of the month? So as to get money. Why do you want money? So as to eat. If a man does not work, neither would he eat. But man wants to eat, therefore he will work. Why does he want to eat? Because he's hungry. Because the hunger will be biting him. He must work. Do you tell me then? We've gone through all the primary school so as to work. We went through secondary school so as to work. We went to university so as to work. We labor today so as to work. And so as to get salary, and so as to eat, so as to satisfy hunger. The life of man, whatever he does, wherever he is, is black, is white, is a man, or she's a woman. The life of a human being is to be able to satisfy hunger and thirst. And think about all the things we do, all the intelligence we put into it. And all the research we put into it, all so that we can satisfy hunger. Why do we come to church? Because all our labor in the physical is to satisfy hunger. All our labor in the natural is to satisfy hunger. All our worship, all our teaching, all our doctrine, and all the things we do, whether we are singing, or we are preaching, or we are praying, or we are going to retreat, or we are going to congress, or we are going to conference, or we are buying another Bible, or we are buying commentary. Anything we are doing is to satisfy spiritual hunger. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Once we lose the focus and we forget, the reason why we do anything we do at all is to satisfy their spiritual hunger. Then we have lost our focus. We have lost our direction. There is no reason for doing what we are doing. Close it up and go back home. Because the reason for coming here is that their spiritual hunger in us for righteousness for the likeness unto God for the nature of God must be satisfied what do you think we're recording all this video to send to people to satisfy their spiritual hunger in regions far away why are we putting it in case why are we having CD is it that we just like to be you know troubling ourselves roll something together put something inside the mechanism and then hear the voice again do we like the voice so much no is to satisfy the spiritual hunger in the lives of the people and if what we're doing does not satisfy that spiritual hunger why do people change jobs why is this somebody is working here now and then he quits and he looks for another job why ask them ah i was working there i couldn't make a speech what do you mean I couldn't feed my family. I was just walking and walking and walking. What they were giving me will not satisfy my family. Why am I walking? 
if my family will not be satisfied i want to satisfy hunger that's why i'm working and if the sin doesn't satisfy the hunger i will have to change and go to another place isn't that the same thing spiritually what are we here is to satisfy the hunger that we have in our hearts this hunger for righteousness and this hunger for holiness and purity it will be satisfied Amen. point number one passion for true righteousness passion for true righteousness we're looking at uh, philippians chapter 3 philippians chapter 3 i'm reading to you from verse 7 in philippians chapter 3 verse 7 it says but what things were gained to me those i counted loss for christ i'm sure you understand now a man is not uh, is not mad it's not unintelligent he couldn't satisfy hunger and then he begin to feel i think i must have some things at my home in my house here to sell and then he takes his uh, radio or tape recorder tape player and then he says who wants to buy this what do you want to sell it don't you love uh, you know hearing something through that recorder yes i love but i uh, soon money we can't feed what's uh, the radio something doing what's the chair doing there all these coats what are they doing in my wardrobe if i don't have anything to eat they sell it up they sell them up so that they will satisfy this basic need of man to satisfy hunger that's why paul the apostle you think he was a madman you think he was so much consecrated yes he was consecrated but to satisfy hunger that's why he said the things what things were gained to me those i counted loss for christ yea doubtless i count all things loss for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord for whom i have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but don't that i may win christ and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through faith of christ the faith of christ the righteousness which is of god by faith you see that he said why i dispose of all those other things is that there is a yearning within me there is a hunger biting me in the inner man there is a thirst that i have in the inner man and because of that thirst and because of that desire because of that passion that's why i got rid of all the other things that i may win christ and that i will not have the righteousness which is self-righteousness but i will have the righteousness which is of god by faith that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death and that's what we also need to have that is a passion within you a desire within you. you want to be like god you want to be like christ and you want the likeness of christ and the nature of god to so much be in you that there will be no other sin that will compete with that nature of god in your life that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the power of righteousness in my life that's why you dispose of the things that will compete with those things in your life that are very essential and very very important that's in fact that's why Paul the Apostle preached uh, the, the Jewish people in Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 3. In Romans chapter 10, verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Uh, let me remind you once again we're talking about this hunger and thirst this passion for righteousness uh, you, you know uh, there are times when you are hungry in the natural in the physical and uh, then you find some kind of food that you produce at the backside 
at, at your yard and say this is food after all but then you have not studied about balanced diet and because you have not studied about balanced diet you say food is food food is food and even though the thing does not agree with your system with your constitution and on the inside the thing is not really feeding you therefore you eat and it appears you are full and you are full for a moment 30 minutes after you are feeling hungry again you say what is this i just ate the things you have been eating although it's food but it's not balanced diet it's not really feeding you it's not satisfying the hunger it gave you ulcer but you didn't detect it you kept on eating that thing you eat more you eat more the more you eat the more you get hungry and then eventually when you become reasonable intelligent you want to find out you visit a doctor you say doctor i don't understand i eat so much in fact i eat more than three times a day and 30 minutes after that food i'm terribly hungry again and the doctor begins to ask you what have you been eating i eat this what else do you eat that's what i eat what else that's what i eat that only thing since when i don't know now for many many years i just i just like that kind of food and that's what i just did and then he says okay let me let me test you and then they put all their gadgets and everything inside and they they find out they say only god can save your life your intestines are gone there is so inside you there is also do you sometimes wake up in the dead of the night with real pain inside you on top here at the bottom of your chest on the top of your stomach doctor did you know that's exactly if i try to sleep up that biting pain will wake me up that's what i'm telling you i say doctor you're almost gone you're almost gone we need to give you now special attention do you understand that many people are hungry for god they have been eating the wrong kind of sin that will not give them the righteousness of god you see all those jews they thought this is all right self-righteousness they thought that's it and they went about just talking about their own self-righteousness and it doesn't work and they still have spiritual also there is no assurance of heaven there is no confidence in the lord and they cannot really obey the lord with all their heart with all their soul their food spiritual food is not balanced diet it says in verse 3 for they've been ignorant of god's righteousness they're going about to establish their own righteousness and they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of god verse 8 but what says each the word is near thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that he is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved it says it's not the way they were looking at it it's not the kind of food righteousness self-righteousness they were taking that it is the righteousness of god that is necessary then he tells us in verse 10 for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness ah not with the hand man works out righteousness not with the mouth man speaks out righteousness with the heart with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and then after that with the mouth confession is made unto salvation this is the righteousness that comes by faith you know the kind of righteousness they were you know going about to establish isaiah i told them many many years before they were not listening look at isaiah isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 but we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousnesses plural all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags and we all do fade as a leaf 
and all and our iniquities like the wind take us away all the self righteousness you know about it when you were still a religious church goer in your traditional church in the church of your family you were baptized as an infant you thought that is it anytime they ask are you a christian of course don't you know my name i was baptized as an infant are you a christian of course i give money to the beggars are you a child of god of course my name is even abraham good lord you thought that was enough self-righteousness and all that is like filthy rags but now the lord jesus christ came and he told the people matthew chapter 5 verse 20 for i say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribe and the pharisees ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven self-righteousness cannot make it self-righteousness the one we brag about the one we project before people the one that doesn't have the cleansing of the blood of the lamb that one cannot make it in fact the lord told them in luke luke chapter 16 verse 15 and said unto them ye are they we justify yourselves before men but god knoweth your hearts you know they were talking about the works of their hand but the lord was looking at the state of their heart ye are they we justify yourselves before men but god knoweth your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of god luke chapter 18 verse 9 and he spake this parable unto certain that trusted in themselves they didn't trust in the lord they didn't trust the atonement that jesus christ was to make on the cross of calvary they didn't trust the sacrifice the substitution of christ on the cross of calvary they trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others matthew chapter 23 in matthew chapter 23 the kind of righteousness we are bragging about matthew chapter 23 verse 25 woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites I, I, have you ever thought about it i have that uh, when, when you follow jesus about and follow him start from matthew chapter 3 and just follow jesus and see his attitude and see his lifestyle and see his gentleness and see his graciousness and see his tenderness and see the words coming out of his mouth even if you have not gone through all the all the journey the pilgrimage of christ just look at matthew chapter 5 alone blessed 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 and for anybody to draw a woe a curse out of the mouth of jesus that fellow has gone far he has gone far see the prostitutes came it was so tender neither do i condemn you go and sin no more another man had been sick for 38 years take up your bed and walk but sin no more lest he was sin come unto you can you give me some water to drink there who are you asking me for water because so did you are ah, if you knew the water that i have to give you you will not say what you said who are you are you greater than abraham and than jacob our father who gave us this well and then after they continued jesus said you drink this water you'll thirst again i have water to give you that you'll not thirst anymore give me this water go and call your husband i have no husband you're truthful you're honest 
because you had five men before and the person you are seeing with now is not your husband look at that kind of conversation with even a lady a woman that had been with six men with the six men she was already and look at the tenderness and look at jesus saying woe unto you scribes and pharisees before anybody could draw a woe out of the mouth of jesus that fellow had gone very far and what did he pronounce war on look at it matthew chapter 23 verse 25 war unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter but within ye are full of extortion and excess verse 28 even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity that's the kind of righteousness they were carrying about feel the rags outward righteousness but the one that the lord is telling us to thirst for and to have a passion for is this righteousness of the heart how does that happen it happens when you believe on the lord you're thirsty you are hungry you're asking the lord and then he fills you with this righteousness romans chapter 3 verse 24 in romans chapter 3 verse 24 be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in christ jesus whom god has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness not your righteousness that's not religion to declare his own righteousness it says that he might be just and the justifier of him that believes in jesus that is what the lord is telling us there will be remission of sins all the sins that are passed through the forbearance of God when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ Man, uh, Romans chapter 5 verse 17 for if by one man's offense death reigned by one man by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ this is a gift the gift of righteousness as you are thirsty as you are hungry as you are passionately desirous of this righteousness coming from the heart of christ into the heart of the believer you are passionate about it and then he fills you with that righteousness then you reign in life therefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation i'm sure you understand that by the offense of adam the nature of sin came into him and the nature of sin went into all his descendants everybody all have seen and come short of the glory of god then even so by the righteousness of one that is christ the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life for as by one man's offense one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by the obedience of one of christ of our lord and savior shall many be made righteous moreover the law entered that the offense might abound but where sin abounded grace did much more abound that has seen as rage unto death even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by jesus christ our lord we see then this righteousness the lord himself is talking about that we need to seek and we need to have we need to hunger and thirst that's the strongest of all our bodily appetites in like manner this hunger in the soul this thirst after the image of god 
is the strongest of all our spiritual appetites it swallows up all the other desires in our lives such hunger and thirst become more craving more importunate until they are satisfied and there cannot be any substitute that will satisfy the soul that truly seeks after righteousness will find no comfort and no satisfaction in anything else only in the righteousness that comes from the heart of god to the heart of man point number two praying for true righteousness praying for true righteousness come back to matthew chapter 5 verse 6 blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled are you saying but well, i can't see prayer in that verse i can't see even seeking in that verse what are we talking about prayer prayer for true righteousness it only says blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness wait a minute when your boys and girls your sons and daughters are hungry and they're really hungry at home what do they do they ask mommy is the food not ready we are hungry what are they asking because they're hungry if you are hungry you will ask that he comes back home and then he puts his back down he's just coming from the office and then he you know after you know dressing and putting on another clothes and then it's like you know the wife is still coming around welcome honey it's so it's so wonderful that you have come back please please the food is not ready please i'm asking can i eat now if you are hungry you will ask hunger implies asking thirst implies asking how about as we are here now when i preach and preach and preach this is my marathon messages after preaching and preaching then you tap the one uh, by your side when are we going to take lunch or are you asking you are hungry <laughs> you ask you ask there's prayer when you are hungry you will ask blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness the hunger after righteousness the thirst after righteousness will imply that you are going to ask you are going to pray there is praying for true righteousness and he tells us in jeremiah chapter 29 jeremiah chapter 29 reading from verse 12 and verse 13 and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart that's verse 13 verse 12 then shall ye call upon me ye shall go and pray unto me and i will hearken unto you hunger makes us to ask i want to satisfy my hunger uh, have you noticed um, you are in a new town and you just got an employment in that new town then you get to the office the first day and as you go to the office now they have the afternoon break about one o'clock about one thirty about two whatever time and then you're feeling something inside you that's hunger and thirst and you're going to call some of the workers you met there you are going to say please do they sell food around here i'm hungry this is my first time of coming to uh, you know this place of work i just got my employment here and this is afternoon break now uh, where do they sell food any restaurant any canteen around here what are you asking hunger always makes you to ask and spiritually you go to a new town maybe your work took you there and then there is hunger in your heart after righteousness after holiness you will call some if you see bible in anybody's hand you say my church deeper life i've not seen it around here then you begin to ask people is there deeper life here why are you asking for deeper life don't you see that other signboard assembly there 
don't you see that miracle ministry there don't you see that uh, fellowship assembly there don't you see love and affection marriage church don't you see it there why didn't you go there you know you say no i'm hungry what are you hungry for i'm hungry for righteousness i went to one church that place uh, the other week and what they said you know didn't satisfy my hunger please do you have deeper life around here why are you asking there is hunger and you want to satisfy that hunger hunger will always make you to ask if you go to any place and then you say well since they are calling jesus and since they are calling bible and they're reading bible yes i understand it's not really like the one i'm used to but after all church is church and although they dance all through the service there and then their pastor just said god bless you and those of you that have money because you know this year if you want to be rich the much money you bring god will multiply it by 100 and give it to you that if you want to ride car look at that one i prayed for him it's not riding uh, bmw and i prayed for that one is uh, now in fact uh, it's me that cautioned him because of all this aircraft uh, something he could have bought a plane with the prayer pray for him <laughs> and uh, you know if you stay there and say ah, this is church also you are not hungry if you're hungry you'll say no this is not the kind of church i want i'm hungry for righteousness i'm hungry for holiness when will i hear this kind of thing then you ransack your house before you get deeper life and you bring all those cassettes out and you begin to listen and then when you listen to one cassette and it knocks you down blows your mind you get on your knees and pray and then you cry you say yes that's what i'm looking for you know this is food this is righteousness if you go to any place and you are not hungry for righteousness and just get into any church any fellowship eh, something is wrong with you but you see that hunger will make you to ask you'll be seeking the lord you'll be praying to the lord sephaniah chapter 2 verse 3 sephaniah i'm reading chapter 2 and in verse 3 sephaniah chapter 2 verse 3 seek ye the lord or ye the meek or ye meek of the earth which have wrought is judgment seek righteousness that's prayer seek righteousness if you are hungry you are going to seek after righteousness it will be your passion it will be your desire you will want it at all costs and whatever preparation you need to make you'll make it so that this righteousness will be in your life second timothy chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 reading from verse 19 nevertheless the foundation of god standeth sure having this seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let everyone that nameth the name of christ depart from iniquity but in a great house they are not only vessels of gold and of silver but of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor if a man therefore purge himself from these if a man therefore purge himself from these wait a moment we're talking about hunger we're talking about thirst you, you know sometimes we know all these things but somebody has to remind you you wake up in the morning and then you feel terribly hungry it's like you don't know what happened to your stomach in the night and normally you will do this and this and this and that before you take your bath and before you wash your mouth but waking up this morning the hunger was terrible and then you said please my wife please very quickly now don't do any other thing go to the kitchen make ready and i need to eat something now and very quickly you rush into the bathroom and you wash your mouth you wash your mouth and, and you're not normally in a hurry like that to wash your mouth normally you'll take these things easy and do this and do this and do this before you maybe before you wash your mouth but this morning because the hunger was biting you and you are going to take food inside therefore you're rushed you're in a hurry to wash to cleanse up 
so that you can eat isn't it the same thing isn't that what the lord is telling us you want this righteousness from the hand of the lord and you are passionate about it and therefore you realize because of the righteousness you want you're in a hurry you go into the closet you purge yourself if a man therefore purge himself from this he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meat for the master's use prepared unto every good work flee also youthful laws but follow righteousness you see what it does in our lives you follow the righteousness of the lord you seek after the righteousness of christ you are passionate about seeking the righteousness of the lord but you flee some other things first you purge yourself from some other things first and then you run after the righteousness that is in christ the righteousness coming from christ follow righteousness faith charity peace with them that call on the lord with from a pure out of a pure heart and that's what the lord is telling us and then in first timothy chapter 6 first timothy chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 6 but godliness with contentment is great gain what's the what's the connection of this with seeking righteousness uh, would you look up here please uh, for a moment you know this seeking righteousness it, it don't, it's not just prayer alone let's 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 think together it takes time for you to leave where you are living normally and come to this congress how much time did you spend on the road to even get here seeking something because you see you are getting here cannot come to you in your houses it's not that easy somebody has to make the effort if you stay where you are if i am the one coming to give you i say I have to come to your place somebody has to move either i come to you or you come to me but it's going to take time from somebody even if our electronics people are going to record and they're going to send it to you we still have to use some people to post and to send it to you it's still going to take effort from somebody take time from somebody to get it to you it may take time from you to push everything aside and travel here and make the journey if you are going to travel there what does that mean if you're a businessman it's going to take time away from you don't you know what they tell us time is money and if your mind is always on money you will not get the righteousness it's not just prayer for you to leave your job and so for you to pack everything aside show me anybody here that is living in town and we have a congress and he's qualified to be at the congress and then he rushes to his place of work in the afternoon very early he comes for faith clinic and then after faith clinic he has gone ask for him where's brother so and so where is sister so and so he went to town he has gone to work and then he comes back about 6 30 to meet the final message after all i participated what do you mean you participated what you heard in the morning and you ran to your place of work to make money to talk with people everything evaporates away that's different from the people that are here heart mind spirit soul body everything and then before you come back in the evening you have a lot of things in your head godliness with contentment is great gain and there are some people it's not even that you are employed by anybody you are self-employed but your goal is i must write this i must build this i must get this because of that you're in a hurry and you come over here to the congress and here is the preacher here is a pastor that will dig into the world it takes time it takes time and you think because we've been preaching for so many years that you know we don't labor at all i don't know what other preachers do i labor 
and sometimes you, you need to understand a single message might take me a whole day and then i'm looking for the divisions i'm looking for the references i'm looking for the exact thing and my wife wants to talk to me i say please i cannot talk now because once i break my train of thoughts then i'm gone i cannot talk now and she understands and leaves me alone and then i want to sleep and already she sees that you know from the morning till evening i didn't even get up at all and one of the days i was telling the church secretary because i didn't go to Bagara, i didn't go to the office i said uh, my brother you may not understand this i sat down since six o'clock in the morning i took my bath and took my breakfast i only got up 20 after eight in the evening preparing the message it takes time and then after all that have been prepared then you just shuttle in and shuttle out oh it's not fair it's not fair for that woman in your house to take all the hours and stay in the kitchen and facing the heat and then it, she prepares the food after all that labor and then you just push the plates here and just say uh, you know take this and take this and the woman says uh, my husband what's the matter you're not going to eat that's my life i took hours before the heat and i sweated and i prepared this thing for you you don't want to eat it it's painful for that woman and how painful it is for the preacher after he has taken all the time now for us to get all this out of this passage that takes time therefore you too you must give the consecration and the commitment that it needs that you understand godliness with contentment is great gain not after we have labored and labored and labored then you're still after money and you cannot abandon your work for just one week it says in verse 7 for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out having food and remedy let us be there with content but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and awful laws which drown men in destruction and perdition for the love of money isn't that our problem today love of money and you put a leader of a local church that leader of the local church is not there during the week he only shows up on sunday even on that sunday when he shows up it's very much late for the Sunday scripture the other people's leaders they are carrying on with Sunday scripture then he rushes in he doesn't know what the rest of the people are doing immediately we finish the service he doesn't have time for counseling he's having even afternoon sunday afternoon class he's trying to get another certificate why i want to change jobs this place i'm working this is what they are paying me i want to get another thing hunger for righteousness where are you where have you been but it says the love of money is the root of all evil which while some converted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows but thou O man of god do i have men of god here yes. of course do I have women of god here yes. praise the lord yes. verse 11 is for you then take it in accept it walk on it stand on it and it says thou O man of god woman of god flee these things follow after righteousness pray for it seek after it focus on it believe in it and you will be righteous follow after righteousness faith goodness godliness love patience and meekness i pray god will do it for you this praying is praying with focus is praying with fervency is praying with faith this importunate prayer praying like i must have this now is like the prayer of jacob for this righteousness the most indispensable virtue in the life of a child of god are there people that have prayed and prayed through yes point number three possessors of true righteousness possessors of true righteousness 
in Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 Matthew chapter 5 verse 6 blessed are they which do hunger and thirst at righteousness for they shall be filled how do you feel if you're looking for something and you put all your mind all your heart all your soul into that thing you say this is what i want and then you come across somebody and uh, you describe your passion your desire your aspiration unto, to him and you say I i'm looking for something like this and then he says why are you looking for such a thing i have read all books available on this matter i have searched all libraries and archives on this issue nobody has ever sought for this and got this you are not likely to continue seeking for that thing because you'll say it's a waste of time because this expert is telling me he searched in all the libraries he searched among all the men nobody has ever got this but if you met somebody and you said oh this is what i'm looking for oh and it says very easy so and so not as intelligent as you are sought for it and got it so and so not as exposed as you are he sought for it and got it so and so not having all the privileges you have now as i know you and he sought for this sinner very easy he got it keep on seeking your heart faith that you will find because you see people who are lower than yourself people who are different from you or people who are like you everyone they sought and they got that's why it's important to know about the people that have gone before us and they got it and in fact if jesus said you should seek for something if he knew you will never get it and yet he encouraged you to seek for it how sincere will he be how will the lord jesus christ wants to waste your life and waste your time and tell you to go in search for something that he knows you'll never get he knows you can get it and you will get it Amen. that's why he said you are blessed if only you can be thirsty and you can be hungry after this righteousness and he says you even you by the grace of god you are going to be filled can we point to some possessors let's see ezekiel chapter 14 ezekiel chapter 14 i'm reading from verse 14 ezekiel 14 14 though these three men noah daniel job were in it they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness says the lord god verse 20 though noah daniel and job were in it in that city as i live says the lord god they shall deliver neither son nor daughter they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness that's a confirmation that god counted noah righteous and this is years after noah had come and gone this is a confirmation that God accepted Job as righteous. And this many years after Job had gone. And this is a confirmation that Daniel was righteous. And Daniel was still alive at the time of Ezekiel. Now, you need to understand something. Generally, many preachers don't lift up another preacher in their lifetime except maybe they're in the same denomination if they're in different ministries different denominations many preachers will not lift up another minister and say look at him is the epitome of righteousness ezekiel and daniel were contemporaries and yet ezekiel said god told him that daniel was righteous but that his righteousness will only deliver his own soul ah you see 
isn't that limited righteousness before you comment listen the father is hungry and the father goes to eat and he calls the son he said i have satisfied my hunger the satisfaction of my hunger will not satisfy your hunger i got the food there the food is still on the table my son daddy is satisfied now you are still hungry my satisfaction will not satisfy you go and take your food mommy has eaten her hunger has been satisfied my daughter i'm all right i have eaten i see that you are hungry all right go to the table take yours the satisfaction in righteousness of father and mother will not satisfy the son or the daughter we must still go to the same source and have that same righteousness that's what he's saying there but here we understand the possessors of this true righteousness noah had it you will have it Amen. job had it you will have it and daniel added in babylon wherever you are i rejoice with you it is coming your way in jesus name Amen. and this daniel that god mentioned let's look at this daniel chapter 6 of daniel daniel chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 1 daniel chapter 6 verse 1 it pleased the reals to set over the kingdom and 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom over these three presidents of whom daniel was forced that the princes might give accounts unto them that the king and the king should have no damage then this daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was found was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but could not find, could find none occasion, no fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Do you see there that man was righteous? That even the people that were using the microscope of accusation, and they were trying to look very closely with their microscope to find a fault and to find an error in the life of daniel they could not find that's righteousness when it's not only your friends that approve and acknowledge your righteousness not only your wife that acknowledges your righteousness not only your husband that acknowledges your righteousness not only members of the church who appreciate you and they may love you so much that they close their eyes to your peculiarities and they say that you are righteous even your enemies and they follow you about and they take a magnifying glass and they take this magnifying glass to look very very carefully at every one of your steps every one of your decisions and every one of your actions and then not only one if you miss each i might get it if we miss each you might get it all of them looking very closely with magnifying glass looking for fault in the life of daniel and then i came back what did you find i couldn't find anything how about you i couldn't find anything how about you i couldn't find anything i'm telling you we're wasting time we're not going to be able to find any fault against that daniel whether it's in the kingdom or it is in the political realm except the law of his god that's the only place to catch him what did they mean by that when daniel said i'm going to be righteous you can threaten him or the lion that doesn't move daniel you can threaten him that if you continue that decision and if you keep on living by this commitment and consecration these some bending on yielding stance an attitude you have no compromise if you continue like that we're going to send you to the den of lions that did not change daniel that's righteousness that is righteousness look at it 
in verse uh, in verse 6 then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him king darius live forever all the presidents of the kingdom the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days save except of thee o king he shall be cast into the den of lions now o king establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the medes and the persians which altereth not wherefore king darius signed the writing and the decree now when daniel knew that the writing was signed now the righteousness we're talking about is a kind of righteousness that lions cannot take away from you if it's a superficial thing if it's something you just spread on the surface not even lion a little thread from your husband will take that righteousness away a little thread from your director will take that righteousness away but this kind of righteousness that even the stretch of lions will not take away this is righteousness and daniel knew he had been there for a long time that the law of the medicine the persians will not change for anybody he knew that if they caught him no way to escape he was going into the lion's den where you are coming from that's not as serious as a lion's den and yet how stable are we how righteous are we how determined uncompromising are we even preachers when you said you've got the righteousness and the holiness and a little thread and you can't bear the frowns of people the frowns of people they are more serious to you than this righteousness that you've got at a great price are we so unwise but daniel look at verse 10 now when daniel knew that the writing was signed he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber daniel why don't you close your windows at least so that you don't endanger your life he says i'm a man of principle i'm a man of decision and i'm not just opening my window because of them i've always opened my window when i pray you know why because the prophet jeremiah had said if they take us captive then 70 years are determined when they pray then solomon had said it at the temple that when he was dedicating the temple if they pray and face jerusalem lord deliver them and he said that's the prayer i'm making and i'm still going to pray according to those scriptures the threat of lion they will see me they will not see me that will not bother me you see that's righteousness then these three men assembled and they found daniel praying and making supplication before his god then they came near and they spake before the king concerning the king's decree as thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any god or man within 30 days except save of the o king shall be cast into the den of lions and the king answered and said the thing is true according to the law of the medicine and the passions which alter it not then answered they and said before the king that daniel which is of the children of captive of the captivity of judah regardeth not thee o king nor the decree that thou hast signed but maketh his supplication three times a day then the king when he heard these words was so displeased with himself and set his heart on daniel to deliver to deliver him and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him then these men assembled unto the king 
and said unto, unto the king, No, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians is that no decree, no statute, which the king establishes may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. I can't deliver you, your God will deliver you. Your God will deliver you. And his stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, so that it will not crawl out, it will not run out. And the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of, of his laws, not only his own signature, not only his own seal, but the seal and the signet of his laws, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were the instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king rose and rose early, very early in the morning, and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. Even the tone of his voice, the calmness in his soul, the serenity in his spirit, the assurance that he had that this God is a delivering God, is a mighty God. Take care of your side. God will take care of the protection. O king, live forever. My God, I sent his angel and I shut the lion's mouth that they have not, they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. Everybody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now you are wondering. Now as, tell, let me ask you. How could the lions eat up Daniel? He was righteous. Not only that. A servant of God. And the revelation of chapter 7 to 12. They are still waiting. And the angels have been told already. Get ready. I am going to send you to Daniel. I am going to send you with revelation to Daniel. And that had not come to pass yet. And then some people began together and put him in the lion's den. No lion can tear you up. Your ministry is not finished yet. Amen. And until you finish, nobody can scratch your body. Amen. Righteousness in the Lord. Why are you afraid of their threats? Why are you afraid of their frowns? You still have a ministry. You still have a calling. And because you still have a calling, because of the calling you have, there is nothing that can touch your life. And the Lord himself, he will uphold you until the very end. In Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. You can be filled right now. Are you hungry? I said, are you hungry? I said, are you hungry? Why don't you rise up and say, Lord, here I am. I open up myself. I open and I bring my empty cup before you. Fill me, Lord, with righteousness. He will fill you to overflowing today. If you will call upon the Lord and say, Lord, what I want, what I desire above every other sin on earth is righteousness. Blessed are they. We do hunger and thirst at righteousness, for they shall be filled. You can become a possessor, a possessor, a possessor of true righteousness. Passion for righteousness. Passion for righteousness. Passion. Passion. Passion for righteousness. The Lord can accomplish it. 
And then you'll preserve it. You go out and live. Live in righteousness. Every moment of the day. Throughout your life. You'll be able to live a life of righteousness. That your enemies cannot puncture. Even if they take their magnifying glass of accusation they will not be able to puncture that righteousness let the Lord accomplish it in your life the righteousness of faith the righteousness we receive in Christ give him the chance to accomplish it in your life he will do it he never fails he cannot fail believe and it will be unto you according to your faith and then the rest of us looking at your life will see that holiness and righteousness through and through your life your character